Hi everyone, my name is Anne. Thanks for joining me on Art on the Creek. We're in my home studio in Parker, Colorado, and today I'm so happy that you're here because I wanna explore something that I think is probably something that's happened to you before, but maybe you don't know how to get out of it. And I've got a good solution for you. So what I thought we could explore today is when you come up with an idea as an artist, and my idea was I wanted to paint a little mouse who was investigating a very large hunk of Swiss cheese on a table after a party when the hosts were just too tired to clean up. I've had lots of parties and I've been too tired to clean up, but I don't have any Swiss cheese. I hope I don't have any mice, but I do have a cheese knife. <laughs> so I have one element to this picture that I wanna paint and I cannot find a reference photo that really says what my idea is. So let's figure out together how we can get from point A to point B without all the necessary tools. <laughs> Are you ready? Let's go row this boat down the river and see where it takes us. <laughs> Here we go. I did find this image on Pixabay, and that is a royalty-free image site. It comes pretty close. But what I did was I changed the position of the mouse a little bit. The image that I started out with was actually a mouse that was just kind of running. He was just kind of laying down parallel to the ground. And I drew him just like that, and then I um, moved the sketchbook so it's vertical and just filled in the cheese and the plate and the knife. But now that I'm looking at this mouse, I'm seeing that his body shape needs to be a little bit different. So the first thing I would recommend to you is to look and see if you can find any picture at all that has the elements of what you like. And it's best if you can find royalty-free images. It's very, very best if you can use your own pictures. I hope you don't have a mouse that you can take a picture of unless he's your pet. But, <laughs> or if you've got a good camera for outdoors and you can take some pictures of some field mice, but I needed to get the position of the legs and the haunches and everything just right so that I could see the shadows. That's really what brings our paintings to life is where those shadows hit. And those of you that have watched me for a while, or those of you, maybe you're new and you've never seen me before, then uh, this will be news for you. <laughs> I'm a very loose painter. I don't like to paint in uh, really intricate detail. I'm not a photorealistic painter, but I do like to express some kind of dimension and shading in my art. And what I'm thinking here for this particular piece, since this sketchbook is, um, it's really small. It's, uh, it's about an A6 size. I like the paper though. I think it is, um, it's a, from Sketchbox, and I think it's a Hanamule, it's their um, uh, cellulose paper. It's not cotton, but I really do like Hanamule paper. They're, it's very, very nice, easy to work with, and I really like how the, the paint moves on this, even though it's not cotton. So what I'm doing is I looked at several photos of mice on Pixabay and on iStock. iStock tends to be the first one that comes up uh, when I do a Google search, and that is a paid uh, reference site. If you want to use any of those images for reference, typically you have to pay a licensing fee. So what I did was kind of a compilation of two different mice that uh, that were on Pixabay, and I will. The first one is one of the poses that I used, and the second one I will go ahead and put that one a link to that one in the description. But the the one that I showed you in the beginning of the video, where he's kind of leaning up against that. Um, I don't know what that is, some kind of an apparatus with wood and iron and uh, he's sitting on there. I think that's a good pose that you could just use and put the cheese there or maybe um, a strawberry or something else that you want him to be investigating. So use your imagination, find out which kind of pose you want that animal to have and then find a picture that kind of matches that. Now the other thing that we need to be aware of is where our light source is. I'm using my uh, Rosa Gallery watercolors here, and as you can see, the palette has already been used. I'm just mixing up my pile of gray, a little bit more burnt sienna in my pile of brown over here because mice tend to be gray and brown. 
at least in my part of the world, those are the kind of mice that come into your house. Sometimes they're a little bit darker than this, so you can make your mice whatever, what your mouse rather, whatever color you want it to be. This particular one, I'm going to do a little bit of line and wash. So it's going to be rather whimsical and I'm gonna try and make them as cute as possible. So I'm going in with this burnt sienna first and you can see I'm using a little uh, Taclon brush, by the way, just a little um, kind of a, a shaded flat brush, a shader brush. And I, on my picture that I'm using, the mice has a white belly, the mouse rather, has a white belly. And so I'm leaving some space there on my drawing. Uh, and I'm putting in some of the ultramarine burnt sienna mix along his back, right behind his eye, a little bit where his elbow would be, somewhere his uh, hind haunches are, and a little bit around his nose. So you can see I'm just kind of going in and dropping wet and wet some of that darker pigment there to just kind of suggest where that darker fur is. I'm not going to paint any fur. I'm not going to um, go into any detail at all. This is going to kind of look more cartoony than anything. Uh, now I'm going in with some blue and just kind of shading, dropping some things in. Let's get some red going. And then we can go ahead and do the ears and the nose. And I see what I'm doing here is I accidentally grabbed the purple uh, or, or red rather that was too purpley. So now I'm going into the red and I want to mix it with just a little bit of burnt sienna. In this particular palette, I don't have any Potter's Pink. And that, for me, that is the perfect color for doing animals' ears and noses and tongues. And uh, it's just in a different palette, the one that wasn't sitting right here on my desk. And this is just kind of a warm-up painting I wanted to do. So you, typically, the way that I am, I confessions, I'm kind of a lazy person. So I just kind of reach for whatever is <laughs> close to me. And in this case, it was the Rosa Gallery palette. So, and it's kind of a fun challenge I do for myself too, is that, you know, I'll reach for this palette and does it have the paints I need or does it not have the paints I need? I don't know. I will find out when I'm getting going and then I will uh, make do as I can. And that's one of the challenges that I like to give myself as an artist. Um, do you guys do that? Do you have any challenges that you like to just kind of always subject yourself to just to kind of stretch your legs as an artist? It's kind of like, you know, since this is my little warm up painting, I just grab whatever painting, whatever paints are right there in front of me and see what I can create with that. So now I think what I'm going to do is switch my brushes here because that one, it's a nice little brush, but it doesn't really hold a whole lot of paint. And I wanna go and paint this cheese. And you'll see the cheese is definitely going to be the biggest part of this painting. Now to mix the cheese, I'm making a, a little puddle of burnt sienna and cadmium yellow light. If you had a yellow ochre, that would work too. So what I'm doing is I'm just going to fill in very lightly the entire wedge of cheese. I've just kind of made it up. You can look at a picture of a wedge of cheese and you can trace that and put that in there. You could, like I said, give your mouse a little strawberry to investigate. Maybe it's a flower. Maybe he's investigating a little mushroom. Whatever it is that you want these elements to put your picture together, you can compile a lot of different reference photos. And again, preferably use the ones that are reference free, or excuse me, royalty free, so that you don't have any issues in case you do decide that you wanted to sell your work. That's the thing about uh, being an artist. We really need to respect all of the copyrights that are there. They're there to protect us and we need to respect those. So in the art community, just be aware of where you're getting your, your sources and make sure that you do have license to use whatever it is you're using. So all of the links that I provide to you in this video will be okay for you to use. They'll all be from free royalty free sites. So here I'm putting the shadows in the, the Swiss cheese holes. It's just a more uh, concentrated puddle of those same two colors, the burnt sienna and the cadmium yellow light. And I'm kind of just lining the lower rim of these uh, Swiss cheese holes. <laughs> and the one on the top corner there, the one that's closest to us, I'm going to shade the lower half of it and leave the upper half mostly light, but just put a little uh, slight shadow along the, the upper rim there. And by doing that, you can kind of help establish that these holes are going into the block of cheese. It's gonna be a little more prominent after we go over it with that uh, fine liner at the end, but you'll see that this uh, it's a really good quick way to do some easy shadows on things. 
And now we'll go ahead and go in with another layer of burnt sienna over our mouse. This is probably um, something you consider wet into damp, I guess, because I don't think that's completely dry. We will go in and dry it completely before we go over with the pigment liner. But I want to make sure that I'm, I've got this mouse about the right value. Now that I've gone in and painted the cheese and kind of uh, put in that extra layer just here and there to just show that that cheese is not completely 100% smooth, I just wanted to make sure to catch the mouse up to the same level of intensity because the mouse should be considerably darker than the cheese. And we have to remember that our watercolor does dry a couple of shades lighter than when we first put it on. So let's see here. In the feet and the nose, I went ahead and mixed that same uh, pink with the, with the brown. And the pink that I'm using is a carmine and the brown is a burnt sienna. So if, if you don't have a potter's pink, any kind of a cool red, an alizarin crimson, a uh, carmine lake, or uh, any other cool red that you might have um, will work very well if you mix it with a burnt sienna. And sometimes when you put it on, like here on this foot here, I'm only adding the pigment to the lower edges of the toes and the foot because I'm gonna go back in right here with a wet brush and just kind of spread that pigment around. And that will give your, whatever it is you're painting, a little bit of natural shape. Now I know this, these areas are really, really small, but it's nice to put the pigment wherever it would be the darkest. And in this case, our light source is right above the mouse. So all of those areas on his toes and uh, hands would be the darkest toward the bottom. So that's where I'm placing the pigment. And then I'll come back in with just a damp brush and just kind of spread it around. And in this case, it's perfectly all right if that pink blends into the brown for the fur. All of that is just fine because it's going to add a nice soft nuance to whatever it is that you're painting in this particular case. The two little blue lines there by his tummy are a shadow for the white fur that he's got on his belly. So I just want to leave those very thin, very light, and then I'm going to go ahead and add that shadow under his body. And now I'm lifting it off just a little bit because I don't want it too blue, just a little bit, just a hint. And then I'm going to add some shadow onto the cheese and under his other hand here. And let's see here. Now we'll go back into that blue and it's time to do the plate rim. Now, like I said, I don't own this plate. <laughs> this part is purely from my imagination. So I'm imagining that this cheese was sitting on a plate that had a blue rim. I'm just kind of eyeballing it. You could trace something to make this curve uh, the right angle that you want or rather the right slope or whatever, the right arc. There's the word, the right arc that you want. Um, I'm just going ahead and uh, eyeballing it here. And that blue that I've used is primarily, they call it a bright blue, I would call it a phthalo blue, and then mixed with whatever puddle of purple that I had mixed from a previous painting. I'm just trying to tone it down just a little bit, kind of putting it in shadow. Because if the light is above, and just a little bit behind, like a little bit pointing toward us, then that blue rim on the plate is going to be a little bit shaded by the mouse and the Swiss cheese. So now I'm going to go in and paint the back rim of the plate. I don't want this plate to be too big, but I do need some context. I need to, to explain why that blue rim is there. And by putting that back rim of the plate in, that will definitely make it very obvious to our viewers that we've got our mouse and cheese on a plate. And so we're going to just go in and this part I'm going to keep a little bit lighter than the front of the plate and uh, just try or brighter I guess because it won't be in shadow. I did get that a little too intense right there and it was starting to bleed together. I didn't want the plate to bleed into the mouse so I did blot that off a little bit. And now let's see I'm going to mix a little bit of gray in with that yellow and just kind of tone the plate down a little bit so that it's not stark white. Um, I just wanted to give it some kind of color. You know, when you have white porcelain, it it has a little bit of nuance to it that's not quite, you know, uh, crystal clear white. So that's what I was doing there on the plate itself. And now I'm going to start with this purple puddle that I have on my, on my palette there and just kind of go around all of the objects that I've got in the foreground. And those objects are a little cheese knife. And this cheese knife did come out of uh, my kitchen. I do have that cheese knife and I will take a picture of it and include that in the description for you so that you can see uh, a link to that one and uh, use, use the, my cheese knife as an example. Or if you've got your own cheese knife, then you can certainly use that as an example as well. Um, you can go ahead and uh, you don't have to be too careful around the edges of the cheese knife here um, or the crumbs because we're going to have some fun with this part here. 
I'm going into that cadmium yellow light and just a little bit of that burnt sienna. I want to make it a little bit darker than the cheese. And while this is still damp, I'm going to just kind of put some random shapes to suggest crumbs. These might be cheese crumbs. They might be bread crumbs. It doesn't matter. We're just letting them sit on that damp uh, table there, the tablecloth or whatever that might be. And we're just going to let that mix and meld into the background a little. So for the cheese handle, I'm starting with the, or cheese knife handle, excuse me, I'm starting with the burnt sienna and then I'm going to go in with the burnt umber and I'm going to paint a little bit of striations of where you've had some wood grain, where you would have some wood grain. And I'm trying to keep most of the darkness toward the front and toward the back. So that will help establish that that handle has some roundness to it. And now I need to mix up some gray. And we're going to use my all-time favorite ultramarine and burnt sienna to mix that gray. I really love mixing this because you can really control the temperature of this gray. For me, whenever I'm mixing it, it always starts out that I get to a dark brown and then I have to add a little bit more ultramarine. And you'll see that first swipe there on the knife blade, it really was quite dark. So I just went into the water and I spread that around a little bit. And we do have to remember that metal does have a reflection. So you'll notice I'm leaving some of this white. I'm leaving some of it just uh, unpainted so that it is uh, exposed there and it looks like a little bit of reflection. A good way to do that is with a dry brush technique, which is exactly what I'm doing there where I hold the brush almost parallel to the paper and swipe it across the surface gently. Now I'm going into a little more uh, area of the paint that has a little bit more concentration to it so it'll come out a little bit darker and when this is wet on damp over here on the handle, I'm just adding some more of those wood grain striations in there. And I've got the shadows on the little, um, the hilt, I guess that would be of the cheese knife, the part where the blade attaches to the handle. And I'm just kind of, uh, I've gotten that a little bit more defined. So now let's give this a dry and then we'll come back and do the next steps. Now, before I talk about the outlining here, because really that is just what I'm doing is kind of outlining what's going on. I am using a pigment liner with a flexible nib and I'll explain all of that to you here in just a moment, but I wanna take just one quick second and talk about my channel. If you really enjoy content like this, and I hope that you do, please consider subscribing, liking, leaving a comment, or sharing this video with your friends. And better yet, if you'd like to get more out of the channel and have some exclusive videos in addition to other member benefits, I do offer memberships on my channel. This is in lieu of a Patreon. I wanted to provide you with the ability to have exclusive content and really in-depth lessons from me but not have to go to another social media platform. You can do everything right here on YouTube. All of the tiers of memberships are explained in the description. If you just click on that link about membership, then you'll be able to learn everything that you ever wanted to know about becoming a member of Art on the Creek. I hope you will consider it. Thank you so much. When I'm outlining here, all I'm doing is just going around the edge of anything that I want to define. And you'll notice that when I did the crumbs, I just kind of did some intuitive outlining. I went around wherever that yellow color had seeped into the purple and just kind of made really squiggly lines. And it really turned into some cute little crumbs. And now I'm kind of doing the edging on the cheese. And you'll notice as I go down the edge, I'm not making a completely straight line. I'm kind of being a little bit wavy and jiggly because I wanted that cheese to just look as natural as possible. I didn't want it to look too cut and dry, but I definitely wanted it to look like it was a graphic representation of Swiss cheese. Because as you know, Swiss cheese may or may not look exactly like this, but we certainly got a good enough rendition that we can all see that it is Swiss cheese and that our little mouse is trying to get a good bite of it. Maybe he wants to get way up there on the top. And now I want to make sure that that mouse is completely dry before I go in and put the liner on. Now, whenever you're using a pigment liner, and like I mentioned, the one that I have here is a permanent pigment liner. It has a flexible nib, which I really, really like because you can get some dynamic lines. And what that means is you can change the width of your line very easily. You can use a fine liner and come up with a very thin line, but I really like these flexible nibs because that way I can make even more expression in my art through the outlining process. And that to me is something that really makes art a whole lot of fun. You'll see what I'm doing here on his fur, just to suggest that he does have fur and he's not 
you know, just a little cut out smooth piece of uh, a, a kind of a cut and paste, I'm putting little hash lines around the edge of where his fur would be. We're going to go around here around his far haunch and then down to his belly. And here we're covering the four, the foreleg, the one that's closest to us. And we'll change the direction of the fur that would go with the direction of the mouse. Now in my drawing, I didn't include his tail. It's just completely not necessary in this case because we've filled the space with other things. We have filled the space with the plate, the mouse, the cheese, and of course the, the knife and the crumbs are below. So it's kind of funny though because the tail <laughs> almost looks like the little ribbon bookmark that is hanging out there when I move my hand. Hopefully you can see. In fact, I think at one point when I was painting this, I thought, oh, I, maybe I did do his tail. And, but it's just the ribbon bookmark in this sketchbook. And the, fun, the best part I think about doing a fine liner when you're going around, or rather a pigment liner, any kind of fine liner, when you're going around your, your piece at the end after you've done your ink and wash, is that you can fill in that eye and not worry at all about making any errors because it's so much easier to do if you're doing it with a pen. So overall, when you are coming up with an idea in your head and you don't have all of the elements in one photo, that's okay. Just pick several different reference photos and take the pieces that you need from that and put them all together. You could even print them off and actually cut and paste them into a collage and then trace that if that's easier for you. So there's a lot of ways around hurdles in art. Don't let the idea that you need a specific reference photo stop you from creating exactly what it is you want to create. So today we're going to go ahead and add the shadows on now to make it look just a little bit more dimensional. And I'm mixing the, uh, the gray mix into that purple so I can just darken it just a touch. And we'll go under the plate rim and under the knife and just a little bit under the crumbs to just kind of give it some more shadow. And I think we'll go under that mouse too. So you see, I had the knife in person. I will attach for you a photo of Swiss cheese, a plate, and you can invent the crumbs because that's pretty easy. You could also find a picture of crumbs. If I find one, I'll definitely attach it for you. And you just put your elements together and create the scene that you want to paint. Thank you so much, guys. I hope you enjoyed this today and I hope that it was helpful to you. I hope that you are able to create a scene that you really want to see on paper come out of your paintbrush without having to find that exact reference photo. Have a great day, everyone, and we will see you next week. Take care. Bye now.